I just, um, basically my background is, I come from a trade background and I uh, went on to do some further studies in um, MSC, Construction Project Management in Waterford IT. Um, so I use this uh, because I, I work in the industry uh, within Dunia Rathdown Architects Division. Um, I would work on social energy problems over the last 15 years and uh, this, this gave me an opportunity to, to do a bit uh, deeper um, investigation as a case study to see how uh, a retrofit did perform. Um, so I, I basically done a post office evaluation of a low rise social housing complex following an energy retrofit and conversion project in 2013. Um, the presentation addresses the perceptions that an energy retrofit and conversion project will meet all intended design and function principles. The research highlights the importance of monitoring a building post works, testing its functions, and improving research towards improved housing conditions and affordable warmth for low income households. So, um, the first question people ask is, what is a post office evaluation, or a POE as it's known? So, does the building perform as intended? Have the user's needs changed? What problems need to be tackled? How effective was the project delivery? Process from inception to completion, and what can be learned for future projects? So, we can see here from the photograph, we all remember them days, um, and we're nearly back to the same problem with social housing 100 years ago <coughs> regarding lack of housing. So basically, the, the project, the case study, is from people that were moved from them to <coughs> tenement slum buildings that became uh, uh, dangerous and derelict, were moved out of the city into these buildings. We could see from, I suppose, Valley Mon, uh, Limerick and areas like that back in the late 60s, uh, there was 10,000 units built within a five-year period. Um, and um, I don't know if we're going to go back to that again, but um, first of all, I suppose we need the funds. So just to look at social return on investment, um, just a few facts here just to, to warm us up, to, to give us more sense of the, the study. 65% of people's lives are spent in their home or in, or in the near vicinity. I know Connor then estimated that 39% of local authority households are fuel poor. Low-income households generally have lower average indoor temperatures than wealthier households, and low indoor temperatures have been shown to be associated with poor health and a contributory factor to excess winter mortality rates in Ireland. Um, what's scary, and we talk about funding for projects and that, at present, uh, a total of 410,000 people in this country received fuel allowances in 2013, and that in itself is is something that could be looked at regarding the cost of that. Um, Utley and Sherrock from 2008 have shown that the average temperature in British housing uh, has risen from 12 Celsius in 1970 to 17.7 by 2006 following the introduction of central heating. Uh, I don't know, but there might be some people here remember houses pre-central heating days. And it shows you where we've come from, from 12 up to 17 and further again on from that 10 years later. So this is, the, um, this is the case study block. It was built in 1968 <coughs> as, as part of the rehouse people from the slums in Dublin. It's like a church town. It's a uh, post-concrete in situ building with uh, brick infill panels and cavity. Um, basically, basic standard there with uh, little or no uh, insulation boundaries at the time. Um, so this uh, retrofit project um, it was occupied when we took it on, so it was quite quite difficult in a sense, oh, and it had to be done within a program of 10 months. So we had a 40% vacancy rate, so we could roll the, the residents on. We'd do four units and we'd roll it. Um, so basically, it was, the, um, it was a shallow upgrade as such um, of 28 units, two, three, one, two, and three bedroom units with a mix of family types. Now, what, 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 what hasn't changed either was the um, the meter squared of the apartments are only 50, uh, 58 square meters, so they're quite tight and small, which led to other issues, as, we, as we'll see later on. Um, door and window replacement, pumped insulation into cavity walls, eco bid, roof insulation, drainage works, upgrade service stacks and fireproofing, replace kitchens and bathrooms, painting, upgrading, and fireproofing of bin chute. So this is just to give you a taste of what was involved. That's the pre-works conditions of, of the building. Um, 
you can see the, the window screen there was basically the bottom panels were asbestos lined. Um, heavy condensation on the windows. Some of the windows didn't even open. They were painted shut with, with issues with, with hardware and whatnot. Um, the pot belly stove, as you see there, was the only form of heating within the house which was connected to a hot water cylinder. Um, gas boilers were fitted pre-works pre in 2011. Um, and there was a lot of antisocial behavior and whatnot within the block itself. So just to give you a flavor of the, um, the works, as you can see, Parapex 150 mil insulation on the roof, windows and doors double glazed, um, eco beam being pumped, and that's just a, a flavor of the completion of works there. Galley kitchen, sitting room, and uh, full sanitary wear and tiling to the bathroom. So the method methodology I used was the bear certificate does not take into account post-energy evaluations, and nor does, nor does it take occupants' behaviours into account. Uh, retrofits evaluations are the human dimension. So I took a triangular approach, uh, so as to close comparisons on energy consumption, indoor room temperatures, and op occupant feedback. Uh, gas and electricity readings were recorded for a six-month period. Uh, for 14 of the occupied dwellings. Living room temperatures data was recorded from January to February in four units, and semi-structured interviews were there con conducted uh, between 13 and 14 households, of which 11 were recorded. So that's just a chart. It's not great because it's, it's hard to see there, but it just give you an idea of energy consumed over that uh, six-month <coughs> period as against what was taken on the bare certificate. Uh, some cases we were up to 40% over, 16%, it, it varies, um, but I'll try and try and explain more. So the easy log <coughs> temperature data recordings were, were taken, as Helena did with a, a data stick, that was just for temperature alone. I, d I didn't take humidity or, or any other information off it, it was just solely for temperature. So of the four units taken, you can see three out of the four came in around 19 19 Celsius, there, thereabouts. Unit A was staggering, it was um, 23.05. And the reason for that was there was a pensioner that lived in a, on her own who was the only person that used the pot belly stove in the whole block. Um, so she, she'd have that on uh, along with her heating program to come on for two hours in the morning. So that was an average of 23. In some cases, it went up as high as 27. So um, it was stifling, actually. <coughs> So the, the easy log chart there, you can see that's just the standard one there. Uh, unit 10, that is, just showing your average 19. You can peak there on some of the days, the coldest day in January, up to, uh, I think it was 24. So the variables then affecting space heating consumption of the tree the survey, external temperature, orientation, floor level, area of external surfaces, unoccupied units adjacent to the dwelling, time spent in the dwelling, number of occupants, thermal conditions of unit following works, usability of heating controls, option to use a multi-fuel stove, window opening due to poor indoor air quality, behavioral issues, and unit floor space. So what I've done then was, I took the kilowatt hour usage through that time of these, the units which the temperatures were recorded, and I mapped the heating degree days, HDD, onto a true uh, met air and uh, temperatures and you can see there from, from the graph that um, the two culprits are unit 27 and 25, 27 more so. Uh, there was a large family and that actually had three children in a two bed apartment. Um, so um, it peaked there in February, March and a little bit there in November, December, December, January. The rest of them performed quite well. Um, so the interviews then brought up a, a number of uh, Fairly good feedback. It was quite interesting. The multi fuel stove, as I said, was only used by one of the occupants, and a number of reasons were given. It's too much hassle cleaning out the grate and carrying the fuel upstairs. It gets too hot in the room when you have it on, even if the doors are, are open. <laughs> Eleven of the respondents found their new homes warmer, while two said they were, there was no change. Drying of clothes, which was a serious issue throughout was an issue raised in 12, by 12 of the respondents, as the apartments themselves fall well short of the DOE floor space guidelines. This may have contributed to high humidity levels within some of the units, leading to condensation, increasing the risk of mold growth, and increasing the risk of health issues for children. Three of the interviewees living on the third and fourth floor 
pointed out that there was, dra uh, there was a draft from the large sitting room screen on windy days. One of the households positioned the sofa so as to avoid the draft. That's <coughs> one of the reasons it was only shallow retrofit. Air tightness wasn't used. Um, and cost issue again. Uh, Eleven other respondents made reference to having difficulty understanding and reading their fuel bills. Uh, acoustic levels had improved for units on upper floor levels. Uh, there was a local public house uh, fairly close by and a fire station on North Grove Avenue. But this was just by, by chance that this happened uh, following the pumping of cavity. Uh, um, <coughs> only one of the 13 interviewees paid by direct debit uh, to an energy supplier and three pay as you go gas meters and a remainder of energy bills are paid in the post office. A number of residents asked why uh, they did not have access to the electric meter room. And through field observations, I noted that indoor air quality was poor in, one of the, in, in some of the units due to overcrowding and lack of storage space, along with cramped floor areas taken up by furniture. So rooms, room for improvement basically from the study was a balance needs to be found when re refurbishing low-rise social housing to conform to new thermal building codes. A delicate balance needs to be developed to ensure energy efficiencies are real. Uh, are realised whilst health and well-being of occupants are maintained. Are maintained. Thermal imaging should become mandatory for pre and post retrofit energy refurbishments. This was found out to our detriment. Um, I suppose it wasn't done. It was done afterwards. We found a lot of uh, cold bridging in some of the areas where we had mold growth, and we had to address them. Energy literacy information and advice should be offered to households undergoing retrofit refurbishment works. The residents were basically given a, a pre-talk a couple of months before the project started through a housing officer, and that was about all the information they received. Excuse me. Um, laundry room facilities and covered clotheslines will improve health conditions, floor space congestion, and add to more social interaction between the residents. Um, uh, heating control should be designed for ease of usability for everyone, including the elderly. A survey uh, came out that about. 10 of the 13 interviewees could not work the time clock or had difficulty with it. And beha behavioural usage, pa usage patterns of teenagers and children should be researched in greater depth. I found that um, the elderly people, which there was three of in this survey, uh, spent about 23 hours, 22 to 3 hours a day in their home. Uh, they'd leave it to get bread, milk, and maybe a newspaper. But they were the lowest users of electricity, whereas families with young children with, uh, I suppose, uh, appliances, Xboxes and whatnot, their electricity <coughs> was nearly two and a half times their usage, even though they were uh, uh, in the house less. So my conclusions then, 95% of the unit surveys did not meet their predicted bear after just six months. Gas accounted for 84% of delivered energy uh, used for space and water heating. Elderly occupants were the lowest users of electricity even though they did spend 23 years playing at home. Average indoor room temperature survey concur with Hong following a case study in the UK of 2,500 homes following an energy retrofit as 19 Celsius. A balance needs to be struck when retrofitting social housing stock. Rather than trying to concentrate all the focus towards thermal performances, indoor air quality is of crucial importance to health and indoor environment. The, dis the disruption caused in rehousing the residents and the need for faci fa facilities to ensure community in integration had been completely overlooked. Uh, appraising the reactions of the occupants by real life research can add as, a research, as research partners rather than objects of research. And thermal imaging and pre-design assessments form and should be, become mandatory. Currently, there's too much emphasis on new developments providing very small percentage of housing stock over the coming years. Addressing <laughs> the houses and buildings of today can provide vast social benefits for occupants and the state. 